When it comes to Samsung TVs, I think that the Samsung QLED model lineup is one of the hardest lineups to navigate within the TV world. And I think that the QLED lineup is pretty good for the most part, but there are a lot of duds in there that we will have to discuss that I think a lot of people could go a different way with. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do with your buying decision here, but I will have buying advice at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that if you do need some help with that. But what this video will do is we'll navigate throughout the whole entire Samsung QLED lineup starting from the cheapest to the most expensive TVs. All right, so before we get into the whole entire lineup, I want to go through the naming structure so that you understand what you're looking at. So when you see Q, that's just going to tell you that it's a QLED TV. And the Q in QLED just means that it has quantum dot technology within the TV. When you see an N at the end of the Q, that's going to tell you that it's a Neo QLED TV, which is a mini LED TV. And then the letter at the end of the model is going to tell you what year it is. So if you see C, that means that it is 2023. And if you see a B, that means that it's a 2022 model. And if you see an A, that was a 2021 model, though those should be phased out for the most part. And the letters, of course, are going to be the model numbers. Typically, the higher number is going to be the better TV. And that is the case in this year's lineup as well. Okay, so now we're going to start with the cheapest of the models, and that is the Samsung Q60C. Now, remember, we're not talking about the 7000 series, 8000 series, or anything else other than QLED TVs but I will say that the 8000 series is going to be very similar to the Q60C. It's going to be sort of a budget TV in a way, though it is pretty pricey for being a budget TV. It's specced very similarly to some of the cheaper TVs, and some of the cheaper TVs actually can outperform the Samsung Q60Cs. This is one of those TVs that I feel is sort of a trap model in a way. It's not necessarily a bad TV when it's on sale, but when it's not on sale, it is very much not a great deal. And it is something that I do think consumers should avoid for the most part. It's an edgelet TV with a quantum processor light, so it's going to be the entry-level light version of the quantum processor and you're going to have a 60 hertz refresh rate with only three HDMI 2.0 ports, which means that you don't have access to 4K 120 hertz gaming yet. So this is going to be not a TV I could suggest for gamers as there are better TVs for the price out there, especially in that 55 inch and 65 inch range for this price tag. Just not a great deal all in all. So this is one of those lineups that I typically recommend people skip unless you can find it at a really, really good deal. Moving up from there, we have another edgelet TV, but this one is definitely way more equipped and is a better TV overall. And that is the Samsung Q70C. Now it will use the quantum processor 4K. So you are getting a better processor than the 60C, which is great to see. And what is also great to see is you are getting 120 Hertz refresh refresh rate, which means that you are going to have the four HDMI 2.1 ports on the TV and you do have a variable refresh rate with VRR. Now it is really important to remember that all of these Samsung TVs are going to be great with gaming. Even the 60 Hertz ones, they're going to have really low input lag, talking about 10 milliseconds input lag at 60 Hertz and even lower at 120 Hertz. This TV is still going to be very much on the budget end of things as far as like the actual performance goes you're not going to have crazy HDR performance. You're not going to have something that is really worthy of being a great HDR TV, but it is a very good quality TV. I would say the Samsung Q70C is one of the best edgelet TVs that you can find out there, but for the price, you can find a lot of full array TVs that can compete with it. So again, it is one of those harder to recommend TVs with the other TVs offering much more for the price. I also want to mention the frame in this section here because the frame is going to be very similar to the Q70C in its performance. Everything else about the frame just is a bit overpriced for what you're getting with the TV, but it is going to offer a unique design that you won't find anywhere else, which is that matte display, which would give you a more artistic look to your image if you want to display paintings and things like that. But for most consumers, I don't think the frame is going to be really something that you want to go after unless you want that look. 
All right, moving into the Samsung Q80C. This is the first TV in the lineup that you will see full array local dimming, and it's actually the last TV that you see full array local dimming. So yeah, we're getting into better backlight performance now and also higher peak brightness. So this is going to be a TV that can display HDR very well, where the other TVs that I mentioned prior to this TV, well, they couldn't really display HDR that well, and it was going to be really borderline whether or not you wanted that TV as an HDR capable TV. Now, two important size distinctions to mention here is that this this is going to be the lineup that offers a 98 inch version of the TV and it also offers a 50 inch version of the TV but the 50 inch version is worth mentioning that is only 60 hertz I hate that Samsung does this but it is something that you have to know it's only 60 hertz while the other ones are going to be 120 hertz refresh rate now while this is a pretty good TV overall when it's on sale at the current prices it's just so many different TVs that are available that are better than the Q80C so this is another model that I'm going to say skip and I'm saying that so far with all three models that we've talked about prior just because the prices do not line up with the current market and the way that you are going to find deals on so many better TVs. For example, one of the TVs that we're going to talk about next, the QN85C, is just a little bit more than the Q80C and it's such a better TV. So let's move on to that lineup. But before we do so, I just want to say thank you to everybody for checking out this video and learning more about Samsung TVs. It's important to remember that this is not a sponsored video, but if you do want to help out and show your support, one of the best things you could do for this video is just hit the like button if you are enjoying this content. And whatever TV you decide on buying, when you do, if you could, please use my affiliate link when buying that TV. Thank you guys so much for your support. Now let's move on to the rest of the lineup. All right, now let's go on to the Samsung QN85C. This is the first we see of the Neo QLED lineup. And what that really means is that it's a mini LED TV. And I have to say that Samsung has done a really great job with mini LED in the last couple of years. And it just continues to get better year after year. This TV is equipped with the latest neural quantum processor. And I do think that Samsung does a really great job with processing. I would say they're probably second amongst all the TV makers. Now, one thing you want to remember about the Samsung QN85 C is that it's kind of like the little brother to the TV that we'll talk about next, the QN90C. And when you put them side by side, I swear they're so comparable. And the only thing really holding the QN85C back from matching the QN90C is going to be the peak brightness. The brightness capability is just not as good as the QN90C. So I guess you're paying a little bit more for brightness in this case. And when it comes down to the actual performance of the TV, it's pretty much the same other than the peak brightness. You're going to get a very similar experience and even the same type of panel this year. You're getting into better audio with the QN85C than the past TVs, so you are going to have a pretty decent audio system within the TV, though I do still recommend a soundbar with most of the Samsung TVs, unfortunately. All right, now let's move on to the QN90C. And the QN90C this year, like I said, is very similar to the QN85C. It's even using the same panel. So the QN90C last year used a VA type panel, but this year they're using an ADS type panel. I would say the biggest difference with this TV this year is going to be that there is no ultra wide viewing angle needed because it's an ADS panel, which has pretty good viewing angles on its own and that also comes with a change where you're not going to see those rainbow reflections become a huge problem the tv also has way more flexibility than the qn90b had and this is also the case for the qn85c as well with the new 2023 additions you have to the samsung tvs you have way more flexibility for example with hdr tone mapping you have static or advanced and this is going to allow you to have the picture preset that you want at the end of the day that's going to be a huge deal for people who either want picture pop or actually accuracy so you have both going for you with the QN90C and the QN85C. It also seems like these TVs this year have a bit more control with the local dimming. The standard does seem to give you more of a picture pop presentation. While putting it on high will have a little bit more of an aggressive local dimming algorithm. You won't see as much blooming in this case. Where standard you may see a little bit of blooming but you are going to have more picture pop. So you really get to choose how you want this TV to be with the Samsung. So I kind of do like that with the Neo QLED lineup. And if you want to know more about the tone mapping feature and the different features that were added in 2023, I have a whole video talking about that that I'll put in the description and at the end of the video. But first, we got to talk about the other TVs. And I don't want to spend too much time on these TVs because the availability of these TVs are kind of scarce right now. And also, it's 
it's not really going to be something that most consumers are going to want to look towards. Like the QN95C, for example, you're not going to find this at most retailers. In fact, Best Buy does not sell this TV and Samsung.com doesn't even sell this TV. You can find this at individual retailers like Value Electronics, for example. They have the QN95C available, but other places you just won't be able to find it. So it is tough to talk about and recommend because I haven't actually seen it yet. But I have heard that it's going to be very comparable for the most part to the QN90C. Yes, it has more local dimming zones, but in terms of performance, it was a little underwhelming to most people. So as far as the local dimming zones, it's very comparable to the 8K models. In fact, it's the exact same as the QN900C if you go by size range. I'm not going to judge it yet because I haven't seen it, but from what I've heard, it is going to be kind of a letdown if you consider all the hype that it got leading up to the TV's release. I also find it weird that it wasn't picked up at Best Buy or Costco or any other places like that. It's not even on Samsung.com, so it's going to be a harder TV for people to buy. Now, if we're talking about the 8K lineup, which I'm not going to get into in this lineup video, I will say that for the most part, most consumers should stay away from the 8K lineup as there's not a lot of content in 8K and also the performance of the TV isn't that much better than the 4K versions of the TV for the price. And if you want the TV because it has more dimming zones, well then you have the QN95C as that niche case. So I would just say go with that instead of the 8K. All right, so here's my buying advice for you guys regarding Samsung QLED TVs. Now, I talked about it a little bit, but I would stay away from the first three that I mentioned, the Q60C, the Q70C, the Q80C. Typically, these are not great values, even when they do go on sale, unless you could find it dirt cheap. I would say a good rule of thumb to go by is if it doesn't have Neo QLED in its name, then chances are there are better TVs available for the price, most likely. So the QN85C and the QN90C, highly recommend those TVs, especially when they are on sale. In the comparison videos that I've done with the QN90C, it held its own against a lot of the top TVs. It, the G3 and the QN90C traded blows in a lot of cases. The S95C and the S90C traded blows, but you're still not going to get the OLED level blacks out of the TV. So you are compromising a little bit, but if you want Samsung QLEDs, you kind of know what you want already. So what about the other TV brands and the models that they offer? Well, I've made buying guide videos on all the other brands as well, and I'll continue to do so. And I've created a playlist that you're gonna wanna check out before you buy a TV and you can do so right here or you can watch the comparison right next to it. If you guys want to see the channel keep growing, please don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you.